Narayan Budu has been found. Confirmation came from the Hunter search and rescue team led by Shamshuddin Ayub. This story is still developing, but CNC3 News was told Narayan Budu is currently at the hospital seeking medical attention. One report said she walked into her home at 4 a.m. on Tuesday morning. She is said to be unhurt but extremely traumatized. She was abducted on December 29th. On Saturday, police found the burnt out shell of a vehicle similar to the one used in the kidnapping in Centeno, south of the Churchill Roosevelt Highway. Narayan Budu was in her white Toyota Prado SUV on a dead end street near her business place, Atarama, in El Sikoro, when she was snatched by four men dressed in what appeared to be police tactical uniforms. As this country still comes to terms with the passing of Bastio Pandey, the former prime minister is being remembered as a great leader, a true national servant and a giant of a man. Akash Samru brings us some of the early words of respect paid to the iconic political figure. Shortly after the news of his death, the woman who replaced him as leader of the United National Congress said she will always love him and is grateful that he had a significant influence on her life. Kamla Pasad Bisasa said Basio Pandey was a great leader who spent his years helping the oppressed and poor. Pasad Bisasa said he will be missed and will always be remembered and loved. Meanwhile, Dr. Keith Rowley described the former Prime Minister as a true believer in the potential of this country. But Dr. Rowley did not only honour Pandey the politician. The Prime Minister took note that he was an actor, lawyer and labour leader and believes his life should be celebrated. President Christine Kangalu also paid tribute to Basio Pande and called him a giant of a man who led the country with passion and compassion. Meanwhile, Orapuch East MP Dr. Rudal Munilal called him a larger-than-life character and an extreme loss for this country. Dr. Munilal also described him as a personal mentor and friend whose legacy will ensure his immortality. And former Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopi Singh also described Pande as a political guru and mentor. Dr. Gopi Singh sought to remind the nation that Pandey's life is a story of incredible heroism, which saw a poor Indo-Caribbean boy defy socio-economic hurdles to study law in the UK and eventually become Prime Minister, and arguably the greatest patriot in the nation's history. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News. And the Minister of National Security confirms that the country's flag will be at half-mast today following Pandey's death. After all, he was the country's fifth Prime Minister. But his journey began in Princess Town in 1933. Before politics, Pandey worked as a sugarcane wearer and primary school teacher before attending university where he obtained degrees in law, economics and drama. In 1966, he entered politics as a member of the Workers and Farmers Party, then president of the Old Trinidad Sugar and General Workers Trade Union. He was also a founding member of the United Labour Front before becoming MP for Coover North in 1976. Pandey was then a member of the NER before resigning to form Club 88, which then became the United National Congress. It was under the UNC. He became Prime Minister in 1955 and again in the year 2000. Back to crime news, an early morning shooting in Woodbrook led to the death of a woman and the wounding of a man. Police said officers of the Port of Spain Division received a report of a shooting on Carlo Street just after 12 a.m. on Tuesday. On reaching the area, they found a Silva Hyundai Elantra in the middle of the road near the traffic lights. Inside, the officers found a 30-year-old St. Babs Road man bleeding from gunshot wounds in the driver's side seat and Tanisha Jackie in the passenger side, who was also bleeding from gunshots. Police took both Jackie and the wounded man to the Port of Spain General Hospital, where Jackie was declared dead a few minutes later. Police had further inquiries revealed a purple Nissan Qashqai drove near to them. Two gunmen got out of the car and shot at them before escaping in the vehicle. Police from the Homicide Bureau of Investigations Region 1 are continuing inquiries. Meanwhile, Tobago investigators are still working to find a motive for the island's first murder for 2024, where 28-year-old Wania Karim Small was shot dead. CNC3 News was told that police are unsure of the reason Small was targeted and killed. On Sunday, Small and another man were walking through a track when a man approached them and demanded that they lie on their stomachs. The gunman then fired several shots into their backs. While well, the man escaped along Patience Hill Main Road, police later found Small lying face down with with gunshot wounds to the back and head, he died at the scene. The second man, identified as Kala Nure, was taken to the Scarborough General Hospital for emergency treatment. He remains wanted up to news time. 
We're on the second day in 2024 and hundreds of teachers are still awaiting their back pay, which was promised by Christmas last year. Tutor President Martin Lumpkin told CNC3's The Morning Brew that conservatively over 400 teachers still have not received their back pay. Lumpkin said this is of great concern to the union. The tutor president said while they understand the immense effort that goes into processing these payments, unpaid teachers can't help but feel disappointed. We understand the magnitude. However, um, it, it does not bring relief to our members and they feel slighted as well. And it is hoped that because of the promise that, <clears throat> sorry, the, the rest of the teaching service would have gotten it. But up until yesterday, the 31st and 31st, um, there are hundreds of teachers who have not gotten it. Meanwhile, tutor is also concerned for the safety of teachers who this morning had to use the landslip affected North Coast Road to access educational institutions in the area. Lumpkin said the Education Ministry should not pressure teachers to report for duty in these perilous circumstances. And as the new minimum wage is now in effect, the Labour Ministry warns employers that migrants are to benefit from this increase as well. On January 1st, the national minimum wage moved from $17.50 to $20.50 per hour. This was announced in the last budget presentation in October 2023. Labour Inspector 2 Paula Achaiba told CNC3 News that 190,000 workers are expected to benefit positively from this change. She, however, is advised those workers to report their employer if the company does not honor the new lawful rate. These employers could be taken to the industrial court and there are penalties for those employers who fail to comply um, with the minimum wage legislation and that could be a breach of underpayment, uh, failure to maintain records to show that you are in compliance or um, denying a worker outstanding wages wages for overtime, the correct wages for public holidays. A tribe has said the label inspector rate also has several offices where people can lodge complaints. Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs Dr. Amory Brown says government has not received any request for help from nationals in Japan. On Monday, a powerful 7.6 earthquake struck central Japan. The shake caused homes to collapse and triggered tsunami warnings. The death toll currently stands at 48. Dr. Brown told CNC3 News that they are monitoring the situation in close collaboration with the Embassy of Japan. He said so far there have been no reports of injuries or death. It's time for commercial break. We'll be right back with Sport News. Ncash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use Ncash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on Ncash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Yes, I accept Ncash. I accept Ncash. I accept Ncash. Find businesses that accept Ncash with the nearby business feature. Visit Ncash.com to learn more. Download the app and create your wallet today. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Attention all bakers, doubles and roti vendors. Boost your income with Shiklisha high quality, low price, all purpose flour and new whole wheat flour. Conveniently packaged in 2kg, 10kg and 25kg. Contact us for your wholesale and retail prices. Warrenville Canopia, 665-3336. Shiklisha Limited. Quality you can trust. Things don't always go as expected. Be ready with Trinry for auto, home, business and group life. Call us at 800 Trin or visit trinry.com today. Huge insurance premium. Pay your premiums bit by bit with FlexiPay from Trinry. For more manageable auto, home and commercial insurance payments, call us at 800 Trin or visit trinry.com today. Trinry, premier insurance coverage for less. Volleyball filmmakers, producers, content creators, influencers, and recording artists. If you're looking to rent a versatile studio space with green screen, video wall, cyclorama, and more, look no further. GM Labs is here to make your dreams a reality. Located in the heart of Port of Spain on St. Vincent Street, GM Labs is your one-stop shop for all your creative needs with over 2,800 square feet to work with. Take your creative concept to the final product at GM Labs. Give us a call or WhatsApp or message us on our Instagram. Instagram and Facebook pages at GM Labs TT.
Welcome back in sport. Top TNT swimmer Dylan Carter was named the Central American and Caribbean Meal Swimmer of the Year. Popular swim website SwimSwam labeled Carter as the most successful swimmer in 2023, as history was made for Central America and the Caribbean. At the 2023 CZ Games, Carter posted a new lifetime best and meet record in the 50-meter freestyle, clocking a time of 21.87. Carter also topped the podium in the 100-meter freestyle in 48.49, another Games record. Congratulations to him. It's time for another break. We'll be right back. I ask myself, how can our country be better than it was yesterday? We all hope for a better society, but not many understand the power of their influence to change the world around them. A small act of kindness holds as much power as a camera, a mic, or even a seat in the parliament when it comes to achieving societal development. I understand that my purpose extends beyond being a mere observer. I am an active participant in shaping the world around me. From the stories I write to the newscast I produce, it is my hope that everyone is heard and understood. We are where you are. The fact that they ask the questions, those challenging questions that no other media house would ask. So, you know, shed light on those things that are in the dark, those stories that no one else wants to cover. Um, I grew up reading The Guardian, actually. It's a household name. About The Guardian, one thing that I like, the human interest stories have increased. The city investigative pieces on the human trafficking. I find that very interesting. Sam, you go more in depth. On sports, especially local sports, and that's one of my highlights for The Guardian. Yeah, I've been in The Guardian started coming, started coming out, started working. I was a newspaper man. <laughs> Could the stories that are being covered are well detailed and we get more facts. Also, I think the editorials, I think they're doing a good job and they're speaking in truth and, you know, they, they're challenging the government to, to make things better. Me in particular, of recently, the last two, three months, I've been reading the garden. I'm seeing a lot of news about the neighborhoods and the community. And I even saw my community featured and I was proud. But the Guardian. 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 The Guardian is my first choice. Jamaica's recorded a decline in murders for the year 2023. According to the Jamaica Constabulary Force, 1,393 people were murdered in Jamaica last year. Statistics show that this is 118 fewer than 2022. According to the 2023 serious crimes statistics, murders declined by 7.8 percent year on year. The JCF also recorded a decline in shootings, injuries, rape reports and robberies in 2023. Just a day after a powerful earthquake rattled Japan, the country is again facing tragedy as a plane crash left five people dead. According to reports, a Japan Airlines plane carrying hundreds of passengers collided with an earthquake relief aircraft and burst into flames on landing at Tokyo's Haneda Airport on Tuesday. All 379 people on JL Flight 516, including eight children under the age of two, were safely evacuated from the passenger plane, according to the airline. Line, but there were fatalities on the second aircraft operated by the Japan Coast Guard. It's now time for a look at today's weather forecast. Fair conditions are expected to become partly cloudy and slightly hazy with the odd shower. There is a low chance of showers becoming heavier. Seas are slight to moderate with waves reaching 1 meter to 1.5 meters in open waters and less than 1 meter in sheltered areas. Today's forecast maximum temperature is 32 degrees Celsius in both islands. Well, thank you so much for joining us for a look at the day's development so far. We love these stories and so much more coming up for you in a major newscast at 7 p.m. today. In the meantime, have a great day.